Hey, this is Jim from FromScratchFarmstead.com. Today I'm going to share about our jug water. And this gives our animals access to fresh, clean water all year round, even in the freezing cold winter months. So I'm going to break down how one of these works, and how we installed ours, and how it's worked out for us so far on our farmstead. We've had our jug water up and running on our farmstead for two years now. It's worked great and we actually bought ours used. We found one used on Facebook Marketplace. It came from a commercial farm, a cattle farm, and so it saw some abuse over the years. There were a lot of cows, you know, giving this thing a horn or a hoof and drinking out of it. And you can see it's, it's held up pretty well. It doesn't look like a brand new unit. It's got some bumps and bruises on it, but it's holding up. It's still working great. It's, it's at least a decade or if not, I don't know, 15, 20 years old at this point. And so that's one of the things that these jug waters is known for is being really durable. This like poly plastic resin kind of body on it. It's super strong, super tough. They actually advertise on the website that it's built to take a hit from a sledgehammer. So far, that's proven to be true. It's held up great for us. So just to give you a breakdown of these units and how they work, this is the 202 model. So basically that means it has kind of two drinking bowls, one on each side. And this works out great in an application where you're installing between like on a fence line and you have two separate paddocks like we have a smaller paddock here yeah, and then we have a larger area fenced in out here. And so our animals have access to water on both sides of that, which works out great. They do sell a single unit, the 101. And then there's one that's actually kind of double this where it has four drinking bowls. That's the 404, I believe. And so these units have a top cover on it with a drinking bowl that gives your animals access to water here on top. And down below under that cover, is your reservoir. This one holds about 14 gallons of water in it. So these units are really easy to open up and service or clean out or do whatever work you need to on them. There's basically eight screws on top that you can pop off and pop these two top covers off. And then there's also just kind of this quick access panel that has two screws holding it down. It's really easy to get at and you can check the float valve inside there. And the float valve is really the main component of these units. And essentially that works the same as a toilet in your home, right? There's a float valve in there that anytime the tank gets below a certain water level, it, it refills. That's the same thing that's working here as animals drink from the, the bowl here. And I'll kind of show you a demonstration. So we're just gonna scoop out some water. So anim as animals drink from this bowl, you'll eventually hear it where it's gonna refill inside the reservoir as that float valve gets below a certain level. And it just takes a minute here. And there you go, you can hear it refilling inside there. It's gonna bring that water level back up. And so your animals just have constant fresh water whenever they need it. Now, one of the things that I think makes these jug waters have an advantage over other competitors, other kind of self-filling waters that are out there is that just below this bowl, they have what's called a feed trap in them. And that actually is designed to trap any feed that comes off your animal's mouths, any grains, any hay, any even just falling leaves from trees nearby get caught in that trap. And so they don't actually go down to the reservoir. And so that's really where you run into issues with some of these waters that are just open. Um, to, to anything getting in there is things get in there and they obviously get gunky and nasty over time and that's going to lead to issues with your with your water but these jug waters actually kind of trap all that a lot of it just kind of gets filtered out um, as the animals are drinking and then it kind of keeps that that water inside the reservoir fresh and clean that's another advantage of kind of it being the reservoir being sealed off from this top cover here is that a lot of times algae can build up inside waters because of sunlight hitting them. And because there's no direct sunlight hitting inside of the water reservoir itself, it stays very clean. Really the only thing that builds up in there a little bit over time is like we, we're on just standard well water. So there's some iron buildup and things like that, which we just have to open it up every a couple times every season, clean it out, rinse it out. That's actually another nice feature is that there's a 
down here, there's a drain plug that's really easy to get at and you can easily just kind of get in there with a brush and a hose and just scrub this thing down, hose it down, drain it out and, you know, put the cut top covers back on, put it back together and it's, it's ready to go again. So to explain how a jug water works in the winter time, right, because that's when you're going to run into issues with things freezing. Um, they actually run primarily off of geothermal heat from the ground to, as a source of heat to keep your water inside the reservoir and ultimately kind of up top here in the bowl from freezing. And so the most common way to install these is to have what's called an earth tube. It's basically an insulated pipe that go, generally they go down like four feet or so. I think you could get ones that are shorter or deeper depending on your climate and how you know how cold and how far of like there's there's a frost line how, how deep the frost line is in your area but you install one of those earth tubes and that's actually going to bring the heat from the earth up kind of into the unit itself and help to heat the water keep it from freezing all winter long if you're in colder more northern climates like we are they do make one with a um, heater inside it's an electric heater I believe it's just a 65 watt heater that, that plugs in along with the unit. And so that um, earth tube, the geothermal heat, and that heater can kind of work in tandem. That's what ours has. And you want that in a, a more cold climate because the geothermal may not be enough on its own. Even though that's the primary way it heats, that, that heater will actually add some extra heat and help keep things from freezing. Now there's also three draw tubes that each of the bowls have attached to them that go down into that reservoir and actually can help keep the water up top from freezing as well. Two of them are made of copper, one's made of CPVC, and those act as basically a straw that goes down into that reservoir, pulls up warmer, fresh water up top. And I don't fully understand how this functions, but on their website, they claim that as the water gets colder up top here in this bowl, it actually has a way of kind of drawing warmer water up through those draw tubes into this reservoir and kind of cycling out the cold water for some warmer water, which also gives you an extra measure against freezing, right? And so if you have, if your animals are regularly drinking out of this, uh, you, you're not going to really run that risk too much of things freezing up top. You certainly can in like really, really cold temps, but that's kind of an extra measure if there's a period of time where your animals aren't drinking out of here to also help that water cycle through and stay warmer up top to help prevent freezing. So to talk a little bit about how these units are installed, there's that, that earth tube that I talked about, right, which that's going to be going to be your first piece that you'll dig down, you'll install that earth tube deep, maybe four feet into the ground. You'll bring up your water and your electric through that and connect it to the unit. And then you pour a concrete base that this sits on. There's four anchor bolts that you install on each corner of the unit that really secures it down to that concrete base. And that's the way you're supposed to install these. We took a little different approach. The first year that we moved on to our farm here, it was getting late in the fall, winter was quick approaching. We already had this jug water unit and I really wanted to get it installed and up and running for the winter. And we didn't have the time or the equipment really to dig in a water line, you know, four feet underground and run it like we should have. And so I came up with kind of just a temporary solution that has worked for us. I don't know that I'd recommend it for everybody, but what we did is actually bought a heated hose, which I think I just found it at Farm and Fleet, like a 50 foot heated hose. And we have that running from a hydrant in our barn out to this unit. And I buried it under the ground, just about eight inches or so. So it's just got a little bit of ground cover, ran it up into the unit. I also ran an extension cord with it for powering that, that heater inside. And so I actually do not have the earth tube installed with my unit. It's just running from that heated hose to keep, you know, a, a constant source of fresh water flowing in and then that electric um, heater inside of here. And we live in Northern Illinois, so we're in a pretty cold climate. And thankfully in two years of operating this, I guess two winters of operating this, we have not had it freeze yet. 
I, I don't want that to be the long-term solution. I want to eventually install it properly, get that earth tube in there, bury the water line deeper. I just didn't have enough time to do that initially. And thankfully it's held up, it's worked, things have not frozen. And that, that heated hose has done the trick. Uh, I, I did call, I called a uh, jug water rep just and ran it past him when I was thinking about doing that. And their response was like, oh, there's, there's no way that's gonna work. You, you know, you're, you're gonna have a world of troubles ahead of you. And so far it's worked. And you know, we've had some pretty cold stretches in the winter and it's, it's all held up okay. So again, I wouldn't recommend that if you have the time and equipment, install it properly. But if you're looking for a really quick solution just to get it up and running, that could work for you. So even with that temporary setup, this unit has worked great for us. We've been so, so thankful for it here on our farmstead. I always tell people it's been like a godsend for us in the winter time. Uh, it, just to not have to worry about water freezing or water running out or bringing five gallon buckets of water from the house out to the fenced pasture here. It's really made our lives so, so, so much easier in the winter and just to know that our animals have access to clean, fresh water. Size-wise, it's also really versatile. I think pretty much any animal that you have on your farm could drink out of here. So we use it mainly for our cows right now, and then we have a livestock guardian dog, and she comes in here and drinks out of here fine too. But even smaller animals, goats, sheep, babies, anything I think would have an easy time getting water out of here. Pigs even could use this. One thing that we've learned with ours is that if you're gonna leave it sitting without animals in your in this pasture where it's installed for any, you know, longer than a week or so, you'll probably want to shut it off, drain it, kind of just decommission it for that time. And that's what we're gonna move towards more in the summertime is just, you know, draining this out, and really only using it during the winter because we have it installed in our fenced area that's kind of our sacrifice area or where we overwinter our animals. And so they're in here all winter long, but during the summer we have them out on a back field and so they're only back up here every so often. And we found that if we leave this just up and running, it gets kind of dirty and whatnot from just stagnant water sitting in there. So it's best just to drain it, shut off the water supply, leave it be, let it let it dry and air out, and then use it only when your animals are there and actively using it. As far as parts and tools and maintenance and whatnot, like I said, really the main component is that float valve. Um, we did when we bought it that the float valve, because we bought it used, the float valve was not functioning properly, so we actually had to buy a new one. It wasn't too expensive. We put it in and I'm sure it's gonna be set for the next at least 10 years to work with that float valve. Aside from that, there's some like gasketing that needs to re be replaced every so often. Ours is starting to deteriorate just because of its age, but there's really not very many uh, other parts or components to these things. You know, that heating element might burn out eventually and need to be replaced but they're, they're really solid, like I said. I don't think I mentioned this earlier, but inside this resin body, there it's, it's fully insulated too. I think there's like a spray foam insulation inside of there. And so that, you know, obviously helps to trap in heat in the winter. All that you need for kind of maintaining one of these things is a flathead screwdriver. So I just always have one of these on hand and it's really easy just to get in here and undo these screws and just pop you know pop these covers off check out what's going on inside clean it out occasionally I, I think this is true of any water that you have that you're gonna run through the winter time but occasionally the water in the bowl will freeze up a little bit I've never had it like completely freeze over but on those like zero degree days or below zero with like really bad wind chill and your animals aren't drinking out of here constantly. And we only have like two or three cows drinking from here at a time. So if you have a larger herd of something, obviously, you know, you'll probably have less issues with things freezing over. We've occasionally had it. I just make sure to check it in the morning, in the evening when I'm doing chores and you just have, you know, your screwdriver or a hammer or a chisel or something on hand. Just break that out, get that ice out of there and 
you're good to go after that. There is also an adjustment over on this side. There's a little knob that you can turn with a screwdriver that adjusts the level of the float valve which then adjusts the height of your water inside your bowl. And so if you are having issues with something freezing over, you might have it set too high, you can lower that so there's less water up top that um, you know is exposed to the cold. So you can adjust that water level seasonally as needed or I guess based on you know the type of animals and kind of the water intake that they have. So that's a tour of our jug water and we just live on a five acre homestead here and have this and, and it's worked out great for us. And I really think that one of these could be a great addition to any farm, homestead, any size that you are, whether it's a bigger commercial operation or even just you have, just have a few animals like we do. It's certainly awesome to have, you know, reliable, clean, fresh water for your animals all year round. And this is such a great option, awesome design. These things are solid. They're built to last. And as you can see, ours is really old and time tested and installed in kind of a really janky way but it still has worked and still been great for us. I did work at a farm that was an even colder climate than where we're at here and they had this same exact jug waterer model the 202 installed but they had installed the proper way with the earth tube and the concrete pad and it worked great. So eventually I hope to do that too. I'm sure it will work even better than it does now. So I hope this tour of our jug water has been helpful for you. I believe the website is jugwaters.com. If you wanna go check them out, you can find either like a dealer or a representative uh, in your area to, you know, look into getting one or ask more questions about it. But drop a comment below if you do have questions or if you have experience with a jug water too and wanna to share that, I'd love to hear from you. So thanks for stopping by the farmstead today and we'll see you next time.